Giratina. Or is it Giratina? <laughs> it's not Giratina, that'd be terrible. Giratina, the dark reality bending dragon Pokemon. It's popularly thought from the Pokemon mythos that Giratina is meant to represent antimatter, but does it? Or is Pokemon lying to us? Not <laughs> But first, hey, do you have opinions? Would you like to turn those opinions into gift cards for more games? This video is sponsored by Opinion Outpost, a website where you can take surveys to earn points and you can turn those points into gift cards. In my money-hurting college days, I bought all sorts of games with gift cards from this site and others like it. I have given it a test run and can now recommend it. Opinion Outpost, give your opinions, get great games. Click the link in the description to check it out. Anyway, this episode contains major plot spoilers for Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. So if you haven't played those games yet, well, you're late. In the fourth generation games, the deranged cult leader Cyrus tries to reshape the world using the powers of Dialga and Palkia. This winds up ripping open a portal. A portal that leads to the Distortion World, home of Giratina. In the Distortion World, all sorts of bizarre things happen. Chunks of land and bodies of water float in mid-air, some seeming to face sideways or even upside down, yet you can still walk on them. Platforms rise and fall and swing from side to side for almost no apparent reason at all. As the player, you are told that space and time are being warped in the distortion world, and let's keep that in mind for later. So what leads many people to believe that Giratina is supposed to be the Pokemon of antimatter? Well, in the Sinnoh Origins myth, it is mentioned that soon after Arceus created Dialga and Palkia, matter was wished into being by the two Pokémon of time and space. It has been known for several decades now that the physical process that creates matter from pure energy also creates a mostly equal amount of antimatter. Knowing this, it seems obvious that Dialga and Palkia's wish for matter gave rise to Giratina to lord over matter's mirror image as it formed. Yet. There's evidence that this assumption is wrong. In the fourth generation games, the NPC Cynthia informs the player that, according to myth, Giratina came into being at the same time as Dialga and Palkia, far too early to be created solely to look over the yet-to-exist antimatter. Another argument for Giratina being the antimatter legendary has to do with Arceus's banishment of Giratina. We know this banishment was because Giratina was dangerous and was causing too much destruction, so many assume that this destruction was caused by antimatter connecting with matter, which we know causes both to be completely annihilated. While this is a good possible explanation, there's nothing stating this scenario flat out, or excluding other possibilities. However, the biggest piece of evidence of course though, is that Cynthia tells you full on that this is a world of antimatter. So wait, am I saying that this factoid that is in the game is wrong? Is Cynthia wrong here? Yeah, yeah she is. She does mention that she's only studying mythological Pokemon and is striving to learn all she can, meaning she may not be a full-on expert here. And this isn't the first time this has happened, that being stuff said in the game is wrong. For example, in Pokemon Black and White, it is said that Qurem fell from a meteor from outer space, but then in Black and White 2, it's revealed that that theory was wrong. Qurem is just as old as Reshiram and Zekrom, and they all came from one original dragon. It's just like in real life. There are five different theories about how the moon came to be. There are plenty of expert astrophysicists who claim that one of these theories is the true one, but then other experts say otherwise. Cynthia assumed this antimatter connection. It's her theory. Just like me telling you that she is wrong is my theory. So hey, I could be wrong too. So let's go through why Giratina can't be antimatter and is instead gravity. Let's go back to the statement that Cynthia made in the distortion world. Space and time are being warped. How could this possibly be? Dialga and Palkia were never in the distortion world with the player, so how could Giratina manipulate them? If this world were antimatter, then your body coming into contact with it would cause it and the world to explode. Giratina wouldn't even have to touch anything really. Coming into contact with our world's air would cause it to explode and cease to exist. That's what happens when antimatter and matter come together. They both merge and no longer exist. It's the one true way to annihilate matter permanently. Also, antimatter would not cause all of these distortions in gravity. 
That's not what antimatter does. So clearly, this world isn't made of antimatter. So again, how could Giratina manipulate time and space here? Why is water flowing sideways? Why are all of these land masses acting funny? Actually, the explanation is very simple. It's it's gravity. Giratina is the lord of gravity in both the Pokemon world and the Distortion world. Random pockets of gravity fluctuating all throughout the Distortion world would explain the sudden changes to the land and your ability to walk on them, as well as the changes to space and time. In Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, the force of gravity acts as a distortion of space and time. The more gravity there is in an area of space, the more time there is to go through when traveling through that area. Gravity also sort of squishes space together more, so the more gravity there is, the more space there is to go through as well. Giratina controlling gravity explains both the time of creation and banishment problems I mentioned before. Gravity, as a phenomenon which affects both time and space, would have needed to be created in the same event as time and space. Gravity also has a very strange power to it. Thanks to its properties, an infinite amount of work and thus energy can be derived from gravity if it were to condense enough in one area of space-time. Black holes are a result of gravity running unchecked, becoming stronger and stronger until space and time are warped to gravity's will. Arceus didn't banish Giratina because antimatter was annihilating matter. Rather, Giratina's gravitational forces were causing chaotic conditions too harsh for life to form. Arceus moved Giratina into an alternate, emptier universe, the Distortion World. There, Giratina's incredible powers were safely contained as the Pokémon universe went through its delicate forming phase. Just imagine the harmony of all of these Pokémon coming together and creating the Pokémon world only to have Giratina fly by and accidentally create a black hole right next to it. Again? This is like the dozenth time you've done this! But after spending countless millennia in the Distortion World, Giratina learned by trial and error how to properly control its powers over gravity. The platforms that the player walks on were previous mistakes. This is why Giratina can safely come into the Pokémon world in Platinum without accidentally causing massive destruction. It has gained experience in its solitary confinement. All in all, Giratina is just a misunderstood legendary that doesn't deserve the dark cloak of mistrust it's been given. It's one awesome Pokémon. And hopefully this cleared up some of your own thoughts on it. And this isn't the only mystery surrounding the Pokémon creation event. There is another, involving Arceus's Thousand Arms. And you can click here or check out the description for that video. So until next time, Stay awesome and never stop using that noggin.